to come to the common goal. One cannot say, I know it all in cooperation. No, 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 no. I need you. You need me. And that is how cooperation operates. You know, this is one of the fundamental things that cause problems in a family. Who pays the bill? Who pays the rent? Who pays the gas? Who pays? <laughs> it's you. Where there's cooperation is not an issue at all. It's not an issue. You will work it according to your aggregates or weights, if you understand what I'm talking about. And that is what cooperation is. In cooperation, people do not criticize one another. The weak link will do what it can do, and the one who is strong will do what it can do. What about stakeholders' engagement? Stakeholders' engagement, it looks very much like business uh, word, but it's not just business word, it's Bible words. It's an adequate, I see that to be an adequate and regular communication with stakeholders. That is stakeholders' you know, engagement. You know, we all know what engagement is. Your stakeholders begins from your internal stakeholders to your external stakeholders. For the church, is the members of the church. For a company, it is, the, it is the workers in the company. For a department, it is the members of the department. There must be a dual way communication that is fluid between every member of the organization. Now, let me help you know this, therefore. Adequate and regular communication with stakeholders. And what this will achieve is that it will, it will make each person who is a member of the organization to own the vision. And for this to happen, organization needs to create various activities and projects that will involve the participation of everybody. Somebody is doing something. In the family, everybody must have what it does in the home. And there must be communication among. You cannot assume that this post party of the team is supposed to know what he's to do. No. It, it has to be communicated in plain language so that everybody have a clear description of what stake he is holding in the whole team. And there will be no confusion when that is achieved. I'm going to take you through a few scriptures to explain further to you. If you look at church, a typical church, the church of God must have activities that attract participation of every member. That is internal stakeholders. The church of God must have activities that can attract the external people, outside people, they are the external stakeholder to come into the church. Your product must be branded in a way that the customer that you want to reach will begin to look for you. Any company that reaches that, you will sell, you will excel. You don't need much money in advertisement. Same thing with the church. But see, these things. You may have a good brand in your organization. If it is not properly communicated to your customers, they don't know it exists. They don't know it exists. Now, if we say we're a church and the common man in the area don't know that we exist here, it's because we have not successfully communicated ourselves to them. And when we establish forum or engagements or programs that we bring them in, they will come in. When they come in, they will just go, oh, this is, this is available here. I never knew that. And also, we must be able to take what we have and take it to our target group so that we can reach out to them. When this area is sorted, you will see the organization will breathe normally without any headache. Apply that to your marriage, it works. Apply that to your marriage works. I've told you about this. Internal stakeholders is you, your husband, your wife, and, and your children. External stakeholders, your parents, your cousins, your brothers, your siblings, and stuff. They just guys, they have they have vested interest in your marriage. You came from them. You didn't fall from the sky. And if you are not able to adequately engage them, because in engagement, everybody will do what he is 
you know, occasion to do and empowered to do and in right to do. But in everybody breathing and getting themselves into their activities, you will discover that you have tranquility around you, peace in your central marriage, and your marriage can move forward without any aggro. But when you cut this off, you cut that off, you cut the other one off, the day you need help, you will be isolated. If you're not able to communicate with both your internal and external, you know, stakeholders, you are, you are a wreck. It's a matter of time you will soon fizzle out. As it is necessary for organization, it's necessary for the church, it's necessary for, for, for marriages and families. So in the scriptures, what are the things that the apostles did to enhance stakeholders' engagement? Acts chapter 1 verse 14, it says, they all joined together constantly in prayer. Prayer is an activity. They set it up. Along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers, they joined that engagement. That is creating activities to enhance stakeholders' engagement. Everybody who is a stakeholder was there to pray. A church who does not pray regularly, I tell you that it's a matter of time. People will still leave that church and when they find a place where they can pray. And then if you look further in the chapter 2, verse 22, it says they devoted themselves to apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, to prayer. So what are the activities? Teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer. Those are activities. And people get engaged in it, then I will tell you what the result will be. It means that you are doing what Jesus did, and your members will be growing in the areas necessary for their life, and also they will be successful, and they will not live where they are successful because they also want to contribute to the house to make sure that the house is successful. They also can raise other people that are coming because in church, one generation grows older, another generation is born, another generation is growing older, another generation is born. So stakeholders' engagement is a very, very strong thing. And if you apply it to company, simple. If you create activities relevant to your product, I tell you something that your internal stakeholders will be very happy that they are being fulfilled. And, you know, your customers who are external, they'll be looking for you. Now, creativity, let me talk about it a little bit because I'll soon finish. Creativity involves creative, it, it involves creative thinking, which leads to various adjustment of your own ways of doing things. I will to get it down. And this can be achieved by learning from other, other institutions too, what they are doing well that you are not doing well, or other groups of people, other families, where they are doing well, and you're not doing well. Other churches that are established by joining your effort with other, you know, external churches, if you are a church, and if you are an industry, by engaging yourself with other, collaborating with other organizations, looking at their weaknesses and their strength and borrowing from their understanding what they are doing well and then implementing it. Exchanging areas of strength with like-minded organizations. And it's also with churches and it's also with, with families. And that will bring in creativity into your own operation. I will say this to you, write it down. Keys to develop your team, your staff, your membership. Three keys to develop your team, your staff, and membership. Number one, inform. Information. Don't assume they know. Number two, educate. Don't assume they understand. Inform, educate, third, mentor. Mentoring is so essential in every sphere of life. Somebody who has got experience should co communicate and pass that experience to others who are coming. That is mentoring. That is mentoring. Mentoring takes out of the mentor a lot of time. 
and sacrifice. And you have to know that any life you invest in will never forget you. So, inform, educate, and mentor. Inform, educate, and mentor. Let me say this to you. This is one of the problems that, one of the things that create problems between husband and wife. <laughs> the husband expects hard to know uh, without being informed. And the wife expects him to understand without being educated about it. But he should understand what I want. He should understand what I mean. No. The, the Lord didn't expect us to understand. He expects us to be educated by him and then we understand. He expects us to be informed then that we know. And then he mentors us. And those three things, if they are present in a church, in an organization, in a department, you will have the best production team. If you look at Jesus, spoke about it in the book of Matthew 24, 28, verse 19 to 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them with, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey all I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of age. Look at what it says. Number one, go make disciples. That is mentor them. Inform, educate, and mentor them. That's a disciple. A disciple comes from the world matrices, which means an apprentice who will become a professional. And in that word, disciple is inform them, educate them, and mentor them. But then he told him, told them what to teach them. Teach them all I have taught you. Teach them, teach them. Don't assume they know. Teach them. Educate them. You see that Jesus laid the template of this. But finally, I was going to teach. Just round up with a brief story, which is Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. And I will ex my next Sunday will be the last lecture on this because we are moving into Christmas. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. We are moving into December, and I will move into other things that we'll be looking at in the kingdom of God. But let me help us understand that all what I have taught you today which are the factors you need? Innovation, collaboration, creativity, um, sorry, yeah, innovation, collaboration, cooperation, stakeholders, engagement, and creativity. You will find all these embodiments in the story I'm about to read to you, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Genesis 11, 1 to 6. And it says, now the whole earth had had one language and common speech. Understand that they had one language and common speech. Language and speech are different. Language is in your heart. Speech comes from your mind. Okay? That's the reason why somebody can have no five languages. It's in his heart. But when you speak, you think before you speak. That comes from your thinking. So if your heart and mind is united, and you are together with heart and mind united, then what happens? It says they had one speech and common language. Then it says, and it came to pass. No, sorry, I'm reading the NIV. <laughs> now the whole world had one language and common speech. Verse 2 says, and men moved eastward. They found a Plain in Sinai and settled there. Why? That is innovation, creativity. And you see a lot of that happening here. These people, because they can speak the same language, they understand one another, they agree, they communicate very well. There is engagement among all of them. You know, they, they inform, they educate, and, you know, they, they mentor one another. They speak the same language. They reason the same way. Because of that, innovation can set in and creativity can come in. They discovered, they, they, they moved from where they are, that this is not a good place, so let's move together. And they did. And they found a plain, which means they formerly were building a rugged land and stuff like that in China and settled there. There is settlement when you have all these functions together. It says they said to each other, come, let us make bricks. That is discovery. Let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They use bricks instead of stone and tar instead of mortar. When there is 
common speech and language. There is collaboration. There is cooperation. There is engagements flowing between everybody. Creativity will come because everybody will be very, very happy and comfortable to chip in their ideas. And before you know it, they come to a better production. This will happen. This guy revolutionized the industry of construction, construction science. And they talk about bonding. This is the first place where bonding was mentioned in construction. And so they said to each other, they never move solely. They said to each other, communication, stakeholders engagement, come, let us make bricks and break them thoroughly and use the bricks instead of stone and tar. Then verse 4 says, then they said, come, let us build ourselves a tower. Can you understand that in each level, there's a common speech. The common speech is come, collaboration, cooperation. Nobody does his own thing. We do it together. This is our aim. This is our intention. It is well spelled out. Everybody understand it. Now, let's put it on the table. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? And everybody's chipping in ideas. Nobody says oh, that idea is rubbish. No, 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 no. That rubbish may be the best idea eventually when you start to encounter problems in your procedure. Everyone can put something on the table. They always say, come, come, come. Not I, I, I. And then it says... With the tower reaches to heaven so that we may make a name, and that's where the mist is, for ourselves before God, and not be scattered across the face of the earth. I will not talk more about it next Sunday. I will continue. But you see these people, they were building formally, they are building technology chain. They made bricks and baked them thoroughly. This brick was invented by those guys. And we are still using it to today. They use bricks instead of stones because the house of stones, the bonding is very weak. And those houses will soon just fade away. Now they discovered bricks that can last test of time because there was cooperation, there was collaboration, there was stakeholders' engagement, then innovation comes and then creativity. Any institution that is built on this cannot fail, whether marriage institution, which is family, or church institution, which is the church of the living God, or company or organization, they will never fail. I'm gonna stop here today, and we will continue next Sunday. To look very critically into some other things that this collaboration engagement gives birth to, you must know that it's a company, a sole company, can never succeed because for any organization to succeed, you need the input of other organization. Same thing, family. For family to succeed, you need input of external people various, of various capacity you know, to succeed. No man succeeds alone. And it is necessary for people to also identify organization with same manner, you know, this like mind organization that you can engage with all the time so that you can rub minds together and you can learn from one another. You can collectively bring together your synergies, your understanding. This is all what Christianity is all about. If anybody derailed from this, you have just derailed from the truth. And this is the reason why a lot are frustrated because they, de they derailed from the principles of the truth and they are frustrated. For you, God will empower you. He will engrace you. You will be successful in everything that you lay your hands on. The Holy Spirit of God will empower you to understand from the life of Christ and the book of Acts and from the Bible all these principles that he had written there, which now has become, you know, uh, uh, a, 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 I would say a thumb for the world. And many are using this principle and succeeding. You also will be among those who will succeed. I want to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. <laughs> the son co collaborated with the father and the father with the son. And that's why the son can do all things. And the father committed to him all things. Ground the heart, O oh God, to everyone under my voice to be able to cooperate with you. You said, come, let us reason together. You, the mighty God, want to reason with mortal men. 
my Lord. Give us ears to listen to your voice. Because if you reason with us, you will take our reasoning beyond ordinary man's reasoning. And to humanity, we will look like genius. And they will say to us, Christian, where did you get this from? But we would know that we, because we reason with you, the immortal, the invisible, the creator of all things. So we are able to come up with innovation, creative things that transcends natural thinking. Help us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Every spirit of rebellion, disobedience, take them out, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Rato Saparata. Every irritating spirit, procrastination, deception, take them out, Lord. Oh, Father. The spirit calls simple. That makes a person to be so simple and remain in one spot when the whole world is moving forward. Take them out, Lord. May they not have root in our hearts. May they not have root in our lives. May they not have root in our churches. May they not have root in our organization. Transformation, let it come, Lord. Innovation, let it come, Lord. Creativity, let it come, Lord. A thinking mind receiving the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says in the beginning, God said, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was void and formless, but the Spirit of God was in charge. And then God said, let he said, let there be light, and there was light. You have the word, you have the Father, you have the Spirit. And in chapter 2, chapter, chapter two uh, it, it says, let us make man in our own image. Chapter 1, verse 26. And in our likeness, it says, us, 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 Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No wonder, Lord, what you have done up till now is astonishing to humanity. Grant us the spirit of connectivity with one another. Connectivity with your Holy Spirit. Understanding of deep mysteries. This is the time and hour on earth that you are revealing mysteries. Lord, carry us by the wing of your Spirit as we sang earlier. To the depth of your power, the depth of your thinking, the ocean of innovation, the ocean of creative ability that can decode the new move on earth where the world is going to turn to us that we will be among those who will invent direction for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. It does not matter where people are listening to me under heaven. Oh Lord my God. Wake up. Your spirit. Our spirit within us. To the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. That lives in us. Father Lord I thank you so much. Beyond my speech. Give understanding to everybody who have listened today. And more than that, enable everyone to implement what they have learned this day. You will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. May the mercy of God rest upon you. Anyone under my voice that is sick, you are discharged from your illnesses in the name of Jesus. Everyone that lacks faith, that you are struggling with belief, I rebuke the spirit of doubts and I ask faith to rise up within you. If you have lost confidence in yourself, I rebuke that spirit and I decree confidence to come back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the Lord will open your eyes and illuminate your mind so that you can see into what God had put inside your body, the treasure of God in your spirit. And you can bring this out in this season. Everybody must bring out those treasures so that we can change the, the, the shape, the, the, the direction the world is going now. And we can be relevant in the new move that will begin in 2021. May grace and mercy be upon all who have listened to my voice. This week shall be a week of success for you. Being the last week of the month of fulfillment, you will be fulfilled in everything that you are expecting. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Your expectations shall not be cut off. And the path of the righteous go brighter and brighter. I say per day, per hour, per second, your, your, your path will go brighter and brighter. 
In Jesus' holy and anointed name, we are prayed in thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Behold, I am coming soon. Between the years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want you to understand that the first war was in heaven, the first victory was in heaven, and it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ. A final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win every house for Jesus. For more information, call 020 7635 0447 or visit cftchurches.org. The time has come to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon.